Welcome to Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 26th of January, 2022. Um, great to have everybody here. Thank you. So topics I've got on the agenda, news, Linux platform support policy. Uh, I'm going to move easy CLA a little later, uh, then dropping support for IE11 and highlights from the mailing list and community forum. Anything else that needs to go on to the agenda? Not well, good for me. Okay. All right. So then by way of news, Uli Hoffner presented a Jenkins online meetup today on the Jenkins development environment setup that he uses to get his students started very rapidly in Jenkins plugin development. Um, we had over 50 attendees, uh, good responses. Uli did a great job presenting, uh, very well, well spoken and clear what he was doing and the, the configuration he uses is publicly available. And the UX SIG had a, a good session last week where Jan Ferichik presented his latest iteration of Jenkins UI improvements. The recording is available and linked there, and it's looking very good. Uh, the, U, the LTS baseline includes many of those, but he highlighted even more that he has pending. So 2.332 will include many of his changes, but even more are coming. And then thanks to Gavin, the JRuby and Jython based plugins have been dropped from the update center. And I, so I, I didn't really, I, I wrote a blog post. That's the only bit of this I, I was involved in and everyone keeps claiming I got involved. Actually, that's, that's already, that, that should remind you that you can contribute to open source in many ways. And in this case, you contributed very nicely by spurring people. We should do what I, you I think said we were going to do. It. Yeah. But I mean, everyone's tagging me on, on PR is all over the place. And I'm like, I, I, I really, all I did was mention it. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, okay. Don't, so, uh, uh, well, I may disappear at any moment. Okay. Understood. Oleg. Like, thank you. Thank you for joining us. That's great. So, topic I had opened on the mailing list was around Linux platform support policy, and wanted to hear if there were any guiding points from the governing board. Oleg, I thought your point was very, very reasonable. That hey, this is not really a governance topic per se. So it could just proceed through the technical discussions on the pull request. Any other guidance that others want to want to offer, or Oleg, that you want to offer on that one? Uh, well, no particular guidance. It would be great to have any kind of documentation because currently we don't. Uh, well, Linux is generally more tricky than other platforms because. Well, again, uh, it's not just uh, Linux. Uh, there are many target architectures uh, with Linux distributions may be running on. And uh, if you document it, uh, I would uh, rather be specific uh, uh, what, uh, um, what architecture would be included. Because we don't uh, test on anything beyond MD64 at the moment. Well, we have some ARM setups. Uh, but uh, yeah, the configuration matrix becomes much more complicated. Good, good point. Yeah. So, and actually, we do we do perform at least minimal testing of the installers on AMD sixty four, ARM sixty four, and S three ninety X. Thanks to some work from folks working at IBM. Uh, but you're right; it should be stated explicitly, and it's not. So that's a good good point. Well, it's uh, something uh, to improve eventually. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, having any documentation is better than having no documentation. Though, well, to be honest, I would expect uh, Jenkins to run on uh, all distributions, more or less. So historically, mm -hmm. we had uh, issues with uh, some uh, font packages which were not available on some platforms. I still remember, I believe it was Debian or whatever. Uh, uh, what else uh, we had uh, for, well, generally, if you use standard Java, it shouldn't be a big deal on uh, MD64. Right, good point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
I mean, Gavin. In general, I'm I'm in, on board with this. You know, having something in place is good. I'm just concerned about the word support because we already get a lot of questions on the forms for supporting things we don't support. But I don't have a better like it's a standard term. It just scares me. Uh, well, uh, for Windows support, uh, it's quite explicit what support means. Uh, and uh, we also have support in D, which is also quite explicit, but to support it doesn't mean that we provide any kind of SLA or whatever. Yeah. So I think uh, you can just copy one of these disclaimers and that's it. Yeah, like I said, I'm not actually like overly concerned, but it's just one of those things that's in my back of my head, my head going, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. And I'm like, no, probably won't be. But what if? Right. I, I think it's a valid, valid point. We, at a minimum, it feels like we should have consistent phrasing across the pages where we use that particularly sensitive word. Right. The word support is sensitive, and we should try to be consistent. We've got the word support on the browser page, and we've got it on the Windows page, and it should be consistent across those two pages and this Linux page but it makes makes sense. Great, thank you. Okay, any other concerns or comments there? Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Oleg. I think it's okay. Okay, so next topic was, again, the, the dangerous word dropping support for Internet Explorer 11. So Tim Jacom has proposed a pull request noting that Microsoft will stop supporting Internet Explorer 11 as of June 2022. And if they don't support security fixes for it, I don't feel any compelling reason for us to support it. His recommendation is let's get it into a weekly now that it's not supported. LTS baseline is already selected. So that gives us until June before it would actually be visible in LTS that it's not supported. Any concerns there or governance topics that we need to be worried about? I think we should be more aggressive about it. Um, honestly, I mean, you know, snarkiness aside, um, IE, no one who's, going to, who's using IE 11 is going to be upgrading to latest version Jenkins. You know, it's just by the nature of people using old tech, they don't upgrade to news tech. So I think we, we could literally drop it now and nobody would really make a fuss. Right. Other than the fact that they might see a blog post saying we're doing it. Um, yeah. Uh, that being said, I think we should be clear on what support means. Just like it, it's been like 10 years since we updated that page. So just be like, you know, we run, do we run automated tests? We don't run a cross, bra cross browser automated tests. I think we only ever do one at a time anyways. So okay. just, you know, very clear on what auto it means to be, so because and the differences between core and plugins, you know, this is, this is core supports it, not necessarily the plugins support it. And long as the same as the other, you know, the same with Linux support, as long as we're clear about all those things, then I think, yeah, we can be fairly aggressive about it. We can even start removing code, you know, if we wanted to. Good. Okay. Thank you. Good insight. Uh, yeah, I agree with Gavin. Uh, but we can be more aggressive technically. At the same time, uh, there is no practical reason to be more aggressive because we can uh, declare that it's basically duplicated in a weekly, effective immediately. Uh, it's okay yeah, for LTS. Uh, yeah, the only edge case is that there is a security vulnerability related to Internet Explorer discovered uh, until June, which is, let's say, quite unlikely. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that it's okay to just uh, drop it uh, and uh, to not uh, force it until uh, the next LTS. Then we add it to the update guidelines. And good luck, everyone. Great. That makes sense. Now, is when I asked Tim Jacob about this one, he, he felt like it probably didn't even justify a, a blog post. I'm, I'm great with that as well. I think most companies just put it, maybe put a tweet out, but that's it. And, okay. You know, Bootstrap but, said, okay, we're not, Bootstrap 4 or 5 isn't going to be IE 11. That's it. They didn't make a big fuss about it. It might just, have been in the change log, but that's it. You know, again, people who are using IE 11 are not the ones going to be using the latest versions. Great. Okay. So no blog posts. That's really great. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. I would phrase it more as no blog. Yeah. No blog post needed. If someone wants to write one, 
We're not going to sure. stop them. Right, right. We won't yeah. forbid it. Okay. Good. I only ask for upgrade guide then. Uh, yes, yes. And that makes sense. It should the be. The upgrade guide is update your computer. That is correct. The upgrade guide is use a different browser. Well, I definitely know a company uh, which is still using Information Export 11 as a company standard browser. I won't mention names, but uh, right. there are quite no, a few. Not... There are quite a few that will have it installed, but almost all won't require mandated. Like I used to work at companies that mandated you had to use Internet Explorer, but a lot of companies now have like a portable install or a secondary install of Firefox, so that you can still use the old apps in IE 11. Wow. But yeah. But a lot of those ones that are not doing that are still mandating Windows 10 and Windows XP. So again, they're not ones that are going to upgrade. So I don't really care. All right. Okay, good. All right. Anything else on Internet Explorer 11? Okay, next topic then was easy CLA. Oleg, excuse my putting this on the agenda without consulting you first. Is there anything you'd like to share on it? Mm, well, yeah, happy to share. Uh, not that uh, I have much to share. Uh, so yesterday I had a meeting uh, with uh, the LFX team. Uh, they we discussed uh, the rollout approach uh, for Jenkins uh, because they had a lot of concerns about uh, whether we tried to roll out uh, easy CLA for three southern repositories right away. And uh, I repeatedly said no in the ticket, but they still wanted to have a meeting. Uh, so current update is that we have uh, easy CLA installed and enabled for intra CLA. So this is our previous repository where we used to, used to push certificates. Um, we haven't updated the, the guidelines yet on this repository and we need to update the guidelines on this repository. Yeah, it's my action item. So I will do it right after I complete FOSDOM uh, recordings. Yeah, which sounds right, taking the date, but okay. Um, and the, uh, what else? Uh, we also discussed enabling it uh, for Jenkins Infra. I uh, submitted the request uh, for enabling it uh, for the .github repository, which practically makes no sense. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just wanted uh, the bot uh, to be technically enabled uh, on this repository should someone want to enable it. Because for me, it makes sense if uh, it's uh, enabled for some infrastructure repositories uh, where we don't expect wide contributions, like let's say uh, just the Jenkins slash infra, charts, et cetera. But it's totally up to the infrastructure team to decide. So, and the use model then, LFX, I was assuming the use model was once I've submitted the CLA to infra CLA, that that's done for all repositories, but that's that's not the case. I think is what you're saying is that eventually it may be that we have Easy CLA enabled on each individual repository. Uh, so currently, uh, CLA won't be enforced unless you enable uh, the CLA bot and branch protection on a repository. You mm -hmm. can enable it basically just by clicking a few buttons uh, yeah, as a maintainer. But if you don't enable it, then the CLA won't be enforced. So basically, the previous behavior remains. But if uh, there is a repository where we want to enable CLA, then you just uh, enable uh, GitHub app. Uh, you can do it as admin. You don't need uh, infra team for that. And then you have uh, CLA enforced. Ah, OK. All right. So it's it would be up to individual repository owners, for instance, plug in this or plug in that, that might say, mm -hmm. I really want a CLA enforced on my repository. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I, think, I think to be clear, it's the CLA, not a CLA. Oh, no. Right? Oh, yes. It's one CLA for the entire org. So oh. there's one for Infra and one for Jenkins? Yep. Uh, no, it's actually one uh, for everything. Uh, yeah, and if you sign uh, this CLA currently, you sign it uh, well, basically with uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation. So all projects uh, under the umbrella, including Tecton, etc., you can also contribute there with the same CLA. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this because then Mark can write notes and I can make sure I got this. Uh, Easy CLA is currently a uh, Linux org wide, the CLA or um, yeah. CDF wide. Um, yeah. 
and then uh, we have it installed on the, or at least functionally enabled on both Jenkins and Jenkins Infra organizations. And we have to enable it per repo as we, as we desire it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep. Does that help, Mark? That does. Thank you very much. Oh, and we got to throw in a note here that we're not importing the old CLA, right? No. Uh, so for old CLAs, uh, uh, I will uh, send a request why it's uh, required because the document itself changed. So you can just assume that whomever signed previous CLA, this uh, yeah. SPI here, uh, would uh, sign a slave with the continuous delivery condition. Yeah, and I think that's a fair requirement. I just want to make sure it's noted. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so so by not importing the old CLAs, that means that to be compliant, I would need to submit a new CLA, as would others, right, when this becomes available. Is that correct? Uh, or your employer will need to submit a company CLA. Got it. Because okay. how it works, um, so if you submit contributions from your company email, so basically uh, at cloudbiz.com. So if Cloudbiz signs company CLA, then the CLA bot will accept uh, any commits uh, which are signed with this domain. Right. Uh, verified commits, I believe. Uh, there is some magic behind. Uh, but if you have individual CLA, which is also mapped to your GitHub account, then uh, everything is fine. Great. Thank you. So there are some additional uh, uh, tricks for company CLA. Um, to be honest, I haven't really investigated them because, well, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Infra is a good place to test some of this because there are less people fiddling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably enable it uh, for Jenkins file runner, uh, but yeah, currently it's not actually developed. I mean, I maintain it, uh, but uh, there are uh, no external contributors uh, coming to the project right now. So it's relatively silent and I could play with it. Yeah, let's see. Thank you. Thanks very much for doing that, Oleg. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting it over the line. So yeah, another heads up. So currently LFX Insights is disabled for the Jenkins community. So if you want to enable it, we need to submit a request to the Linux Foundation. That's the one that does like security scanning of Docker images and stuff, right? Mm, no, it's, uh, well, basically LFX Insights is a fork of KOSS, uh, which was adapted for the Linux Foundation needs. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's basically for tracking uh, GitHub contributions, social media, whatever is uh, aggregator. Uh, it has some security metrics too, but it's not a uh, big uh, main goal. And so this, is, takes... this is like uh, metrics, not actually like tweet deck or something that will let you post for it. This is. Yeah, it's uh, just uh, read only for analytics. It connects um, to Twitter yeah. analytics and pulls data from there, same for LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. Uh, but uh, Mark, it yeah, doesn't uh, send data. Uh, Mark, you want to say we have to say if we want to enable it, we have to send them a ticket. Is that what you said, Oleg? Uh, yes, we need to, to submit a ticket. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you did, uh, I have some experience of handling that, just bug me. Yeah. Um, I will be gradually enabling it for Captain, so I'm happy to continue enabling it for, for Jenkins where reasonable. Uh, the biggest problem uh, right now that Captain is a sandbox project in the scenes here. So we do to get full services from the Linux Foundation. Mm -hmm. Linda help enable it for Jenkins. Not, he's not able to do it. Is that the way to say it? Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Or maybe even a, a mentor or assist, but I think help works fine. Great. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Okay. Last topic then. Highlights from the mailing list and community forum. Uh, Gavin, 
anything that you wanted to highlight here? Nothing comes to mind. I haven't been paying enough attention, so not, but nothing comes to mind. Okay. It's been quiet. Uh, I guess because there's been no LPSs lately, there's been no major notes. Um, the meeting minutes continue to be well received. Uh, yeah. So maybe one question about uh, the contributor summit discussion. So it was started by Alisa and Kara one week ago. Um, so um, yeah, the question is uh, whether there is a consensus uh, that we do it. And I don't think there's a consensus yet, but there's there's interest. And I think it's worth having the discussions to, to, to check the interest. I would like to do it. I, I think it would be a help, but it would need to be a hybrid local and remote because if we just make it there in Austin, Texas, I don't think we're gonna get the attendance we want. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, I have so many reservations about hybrid events. So I would rather do separate uh, offline event and online event than try to do a hybrid event. Ah, okay, all right. Well, it's my personal opinion. Uh, I guess somebody has success uh, stories of uh, doing great uh, hybrid events. I don't. So I've, I've never run a hybrid event, so I have no success story to tell. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, in my case, uh, I'm not sure whether I would be able to go to Austin. I will start my visa application process next week. Uh, it may succeed in time, uh, may not. There might be coronavirus restrictions. So uh, generally, I want to go to CDCon uh, because uh, there will be also a lot of Foundation uh, member summit. There will be CD governance board meetings, etc. So generally, it makes sense uh, for me to go there, uh, but the visa is unclear. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, speaking I... of another set of uh, world, uh, is anyone going to KubeCon Valencia? What's in Valencia? I missed that. KubeCon. Uh, oh, Maybe. no. Uh, yeah, so why I'm asking, uh, uh, so in Valencia, there is Bar uh, Jenkins, uh, and yeah, if we ever do a happy hour there, then I, I know a venue for us. Oh, how cool. There is a bar named Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins, uh, apostrophe, then S. So, yeah. <laughs> That's possessive. Okay, well, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm currently organizing Captain Community Day. Um, organizing is probably a big word, but yeah, I'm making some progress there. Um, and uh, yeah, if there is a critical mass of contributors, uh, if again an event happens, we could also have a kind of small meeting there for those who don't go to KubeCon, maybe together with Jenkins sex, maybe without Jenkins sex, but yeah. Mm. Good, yeah. So we'll see. Okay. Yeah, so I'm assuming that the Contributor Summit discussions will continue in those public threads and, and we'll try to settle on, okay, do we have critical mass to, to go ahead and do a co-located and, or should it just be virtual, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for Austin, uh, yeah, we can ask Ryan. Well, Ryan doesn't uh, want to work for Cloud Bees, uh, but uh, uh, probably he would be willing to help us with the organization on site. Ryan Campbell? Yes. Ah, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Any any other topics for today's session? Good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Recording will be posted. Wait a sec. Let's hope that I did. Oh, I did. Good. Whew.